So we got the latest trailer for the Miraculous movie and it looks pretty good. Like, I've always been pretty skeptical of this film, right? I just had a pretty bad feeling when it was first announced that it was gonna be a straight up disaster. It would take everything the show did, try to compress it and do it badly, and just make everything look as bad as possible. But then, that first trailer came out last year and I thought, okay, looking pretty swish. The animation especially was looking top tier, way better than anything I was expecting, especially considering the animation quality we're used to. It makes the show look like utter garbage in comparison, like complete and utter garbage. But yeah, I digress. Regardless, we've had a trailer drop in like French, a language which I do not speak, and as of recording this, there was no proper translation, so bad luck for me. But since I'm a glutton for views, I'm gonna make a video anyway. Hooray! And yeah, there was a dubbed English trailer I think they released as well, but I thought that might have been a leak, and I'm not going to take the chance regardless. Anyway, with all that being said, nothing else for it but to bumble my way through the trailer and see what I can puzzle together. Obviously, with mostly a focus on the clips. You know, because I can't speak French. Anyway, with all that being said, let's jump into things. So yeah, we start off with a look at the exterior of the school, and the street. And yep, already night and day. Look at this shot of the show, of the exterior of the school. It's sterile devoid of much life and detail, pretty bare bones. And then look at the trailer, more detail, more stuff going on, more life. It feels more real in a way, and you know, that's a weird thing to say about an animation, but you know what I mean. It's just really absurd, the difference in quality. Look what you can do with a high budget. Anyway, we then move on from the exterior shot to the interior and <laughs> inside of their classroom. Well, it doesn't look bad in terms of actual animation quality, but in terms of just general design quality, it looks like Oliver Twist up in there. Some old courtroom from Les Mis. It doesn't look like a particularly comfy classroom. But you know, at the same time, I do kind of like the choice. It does feel real to life, because so many schools that use historic buildings, they don't really update the space as much as they probably should. Hence this bad design. Although you would have to hope there's got to be some cushions on the benches at the very least, right? Those hardback wooden benches, oof. Anyway, for some reason, in middle school, is it? Marinette's having a show and tell segment, where she's loudly playing the recorder in front of everybody and sucking hard. Oh, I really hope this is a dream sequence because this is the sort of cringe that makes you want to cry. Ugh, getting secondhand embarrassment just thinking about it and it's not even real. There's really nothing more soul crushing at that age than to be humiliated in front of your entire class, your entire peer group. We also see her cause an explosion in the science lab, so seems like they're leaning on the idea of her being a bit of a muppet, majorly klutzy, majorly awkward which is a contrast to the show, because there, she actually does seem quite talented and competent. And it's only really around Adrian that she becomes a bit of a mess. But here, it seems baked into her very character, probably to try and contrast the difference between her as Marinette and then her as Ladybug even more once she gets into that persona. And also probably just to up the comic relief factor and make her a bit more sympathetic to the audience as well. Also, seems like her and Alia are actually quite close friends by this point in the story, so not sure they're gonna bother with the Alia is the new kid storyline like they had in the show. And honestly, I don't feel like you need it anyway. I mean, there's already so much that they need to cover in this film, seeing as they're redoing the origin and compressing a whole bunch of stuff. So this sort of minor thing, it's not really needed. Makes more sense for Alia to be already her closest friend. We then get to see more of Marinette being a total goofball slash klutz in the presence of Adrian, and my god, look at the faces! Look at them, look at the eyes, and then compare to the show. Whew. This is shaping up to be a visual feast. And also, looks like perhaps they're going to dial back on the creepazoid factor a little bit for this film. And yeah, it's all well and good in the show. It's, I mean, it's really weird and cringe, but you can deal with it. I feel like it's much better if she's just a million percent more clumsy and spacey and nervous than she usually is when it comes to Adrian. Instead of being, you know, a weirdo. I feel like it goes a long way to making her character more relatable and enjoyable overall. And not that she's bad in the show, but some of the mid-seasons, whoof! They are dragged down by the premium cringe that is her weird stalker behavior. Her pictures of him, her presence for all occasions, having a copy of his schedule, ugh, the way she talks about him. Hopefully that tones down into a silly crush type of deal for the film. We then get another look at the scene where she stumbles across the earrings at Master Fu's shop and instead of them clearly being left for her, we see that she notices them under the table. And then she straight up steals them and transforms into Ladybug and obviously it's all a setup by Fu, but I'll be honest, she's braver than me. If I saw some random glowing earrings sitting on top of a glowing runic circle type of thing in a random person's house, no chance would I be putting them on. What if there's some magical cursed object? Also, once again, 
not her house. She's just stealing at this point. Like, yeah, 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 little red pixie tells you it's all good, but still, somebody clearly lives here. What are you doing, Marinette? We then get into a little bit of action, and it seems in this version, the yo-yo has a mind of its own, kind of like Doctor Strange's cape. And instead of her just swinging around Paris like Spider-Man, the yo-yo is fully capable of flying around and pulling her along for the ride. Honestly, once again, a really good change. Already just looking at her, she's clearly such a rip-off of Spider-Man, so changing things up, it's probably a good call. She then crashes into Cat Noir, and we get a good look at him too, and yep, he's looking pretty awesome. And his costume? Looking a lot better here. It's less glossy than it is in the show, which in turn makes it seem less like a gimp suit and more like a super suit. Anyway, they banter. We get a look at Hawk Moth, who looks very cool. I mean, he's had some pretty bad costumes over the years. Remember the original Monarch design? Whoo, that was bad. I mean, what were they thinking with that? So it is very nice to see him in a costume that actually looks decent. This way you can actually take the guy seriously. Speaking of which, I do enjoy the two villains that they seem to have chosen to be the main antagonists, or at least the main antagonists they're showing this trailer. The Mime and the Magician Lady. Can't remember if there's been a Magician villain in the show before. I think maybe one happened off screen. Regardless, they look pretty cool, and so does the massive gargoyle. And I'm guessing, is that going to be a senti monster? That's not an akumatized person, is it? Because if so, damn. That's a whole nother subplot they need to add to the film. Somebody using the peacock miraculous. And it's likely not going to be Gabe because I think they're going to stick with the classic Hawk Moth design for him and not run the risk of new viewers getting a little bit confused when he changes his costume and his villain name at the same time. And this gargoyle, it seems to be the first thing that they actually fight as a team. At least, that's what I'm picking up. So maybe it is just an akumatized person. Who knows? After all, I guess if you can turn somebody into a giant ice cream man, turning someone into a gargoyle is not out of the realm of possibility. Also, <laughs> lol at Fu just dressed all incognito like anybody would be able to recognize him anyway. No one knows who he is. Why is he dressed up like this? We then have some action montage, which, yeah, looks good. Animation smooth and fluid, looks good in motion. And I know I said it last time I looked at a Miraculous movie trailer, but my god, the water, the water, the water! Look at that! Especially when you compare it to the water from the show, my god! How could we ever go back to this? And then we hit the romance part of the trailer. We have Adrian and Marinette seemingly on a date, almost holding hands. And then her walking into a masquerade ball, probably to meet him? Damn! Considering all we've suffered through, like seven actual real life years of waiting for the romance storyline to go anywhere in the show, it's such a weird feeling to see it play out in front of you so quickly. I'm sure it's going to be way more satisfying this way as well, but regardless, it feels strange. It's like opening your Christmas presents early. Also, judging by this scene, like the one where he pushes her up against the wall, I'm thinking the love square is coming in full force as well. So let's gear up for some premium angst throughout the film, although from what I've seen, Marinette's Ladybug does not have the same assertive vibe that she does in the show. So I'm not sure if Cat Noir's attraction is going to be completely unrequited, or if they'll do some sort of reveal. Guess we'll have to wait and see. And then, well, it's really just an action montage of our heroes whooping some significant ass and looking awesome against a variety of opponents, like Bubbler on steroids, Balloon Animal on steroids, Baked Goods on steroids, everybody's on steroids in this last section, even Marinette's dad. True, just look at him. How does he fit in that car? Either way, this whole end section looks awesome. And it really just makes me hyped as all hell for this film. I have really high hopes for the movie. I mean, I doubt it's going to be a smash hit and top the box office or anything like that, but I think it will do well enough to get a sequel and extend the franchise out and grow the popularity. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. It is very promising, though. And yeah, with all that being said, that's the end of the trailer, and thus the end of the video. And I would like to remind you that these have just been my opinions, and I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the trailer? You like it? Hate it? Are you hyped for the film? Maybe not? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.